Letty, so you've written about first class wines in your column, but today we're going to take a look at what the majority of us who fly on coach class would right. typically taste. What people are actually drinking, yes. including myself. Yes. <laughs> so how do airlines typically choose their wines? Um, it happens in a variety of ways. A lot of airlines employ um, wine consultants, so it might be a single individual, like for example Delta. Uh, Andrea Robinson is, is the wine consultant. She does all the choosing of the wines. Uh, Doug Frost chooses the wines for United, but he also has a panel that he you know, then puts the, uh, uh, some final choices in front of. Um, so it really, it really varies you know, uh, in, in you know, airline to airline. But a, a lot of them do seem to be going for this one uh, uh, individual, you know, sort of to be the face of the, uh, the airline wine program. This is actually from United. And this is what so. they would typically serve on a domestic flight. Uh, it, it is, it is. Actually, you know, they did do a... Uh, um, a tasting which I missed. It was only on certain test flights, but but intriguingly, they did a test of three different Pinot Noirs, um, and I think they even had a uh, sommelier on board. Hmm, it's very buttery. It is. It's a very buttery. It's a. I mean, this is something. I mean, obviously, um, the key to to choosing a Coates class wine is is something that's going to have universal appeal. And this is something that you're going to put in front of um, someone in their little bottle and they'll say, ah, that's your name. So this is a Santa Rita Carmenere. It's a, a grape that not many people are familiar with in the U.S., I'm, I don't think. Uh, I happen Probably to not. come across it think. on a trip to Chile. And this is served on American Airlines. Exactly. Again, Santa, this is... Um, conventionally, the, the basic version of this is probably a seven or eight dollar um, bottle of wine, you know, retail. What I think is interesting is that a lot of the domestic airlines are charging for wines, and mm -hmm. most international airlines still do not charge for wines. Right, right. But a lot of domestic airlines. Um, are not charging for their international flights. That may be subject to change. I've been reading, you know, some some conversation about that. Um, I'm pretty sure Delta doesn't charge, United doesn't charge, you know, international. So I guess the key to flying a domestic carrier is to leave the country if you want to drink for free. <laughs> a little astringent on the finish. Is that a yeah, quality that might make it taste better with food, for example? Yes, exactly. So you want to be eating your coach class chicken <laughs> while you're eating this, and it would actually uh, taste quite good. Now, I can't wait to try this one. <laughs> this is a, uh, a Bandit Merlot, exactly. and it's, it's also served on Delta, but I, I've it never is. seen a little In box format, like that. Yeah. Um, believe it or not, this is two-thirds of a bottle. Um, I wonder if Delta would sell you this. <laughs> it looks like a nicely juice box. by the time you get to your destination. Um, may I serve oh, you? Sure. So this is just, it just says product of California. So we have no idea where in the world that came from. Um, oh, it doesn't have a vintage. Oh, silly me. I was looking to see what, that, what vintage that box was. It's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> the key to coach wine experience, lowered expectation. Check out the alcohol content. Um, you know, it, I like the nose. It's, it's, very, it's very jammy, yeah. um, juicy. I, I think this is quite pleasant without having any um, kind of complexity or, or you know, even necessarily discernible Merlot character. That is like a, <laughs> but as a as a as a as a cheap wine in a generously sized box, I could get behind that. That's Delta too. I want to know if they're serving the size though. I wonder how much they'd have to charge you because it's two thirds of the bottle, and you normally get probably this would be like a thirty dollar wine experience. <laughs> You have to kind of imagine that you're eating peanuts and pretzels with yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. I, I would. I think actually peanuts would be the better choice than pretzels. Uh -huh. Pretzels. What do you think? Yeah. Cheese crackers actually. Cheese That's crackers. What I really like. yeah. That would be and good. And you'd have to pay five dollars extra. <laughs> So next we're going to try a Gato Negro, and this is a wine that's served on Delta flights. Right. It's one of two Gato Negros that they serve. This one is a Chardonnay, Chardonnay and then we also mm -hmm. have a Cabernet okay. Sauvignon that they also serve on their flights. Right. But, you know, I like the fact that it's, a, it's 2010, so you're getting something that's as young and fresh as possible. So bravo to them for that. It's a little lighter and... Um, Maybe more acidic than the mm. last one? Good acidity, bright. Um, not a lot of depth, but on, but very pleasing. I don't think this would be terrible. It's, mm -hmm. it's quite simple, but you know, one, one scales one's expectations accordingly in coach. In all things, not just wine. <laughs>